Hello, good people of the internet. The topic that we are discussing in today's video is one that is very hot in India right now, and that is whether or not India should be renamed Bharat. Now, if this is news to you, here is a little context. The G20 summit was recently held in New Delhi, and the President of India, Draupadi Murmu, sent out dinner invites to all the different recipients who are heads of states of all these different countries, and the dinner invitations actually signed her saying Draupadi Murmu, President of Bharat, not President of India, which is the first time it's happened in official capacity, and that has sparked rumors that the current BJP uh, ruled government of India is planning to rename the country to Bharat instead of India. And there are two primary reasons being cited for this. Number one is the fact that the name India represents less of what the country is about than Bharat, because Bharat is a more traditional name. It has more appeal to a tradition and culture that is native to this land than India, which is sometimes compared to a name given to this country by its colonial invaders or something of that sort. So that is the reason number one, which is being cited, which is, let's say, nationalist agenda. And reason number two that is being cited is the fact that, uh, I don't know, 26 or 28 opposition parties have recently formed an alliance in India, which they have called India, the acronym. The full form is, I think, Indian National um, Developmental Inclusive Alliance or something of that sort, but it, it spells out India. And it's being said that the current government to crush that narrative to crush that marketing has actually started to spark off rumors of rebranding the entire country to Bharat, as if the opposition parties cannot name their alliance Bharat, the acronym, whatever. But please note that this is something that has already been done in the past by a lot of countries. For example, I know of Sri Lanka calling themselves from Ceylon, they started to call themselves Sri Lanka. The same has happened with Zimbabwe, Iran, I think Turkey, multiple other countries have done this in the past that they've rebranded, renamed their countries from a name given to them by colonial invaders to a name that is more native to their land and their cultural heritage. So this is not something that's unheard of, but this has still sparked off rumors whether this is a good thing, a bad thing, whether this is something that should be done at all, etc. And what are the motives behind it, of course. Now, I would like to say first up that this is not a politically motivated video. I do not discuss politics here. So what I'm trying to talk about in this video is not a simple yes or no or a good or bad answer to whether this should be done or not or whether this is good or bad or not. What I rather want to do is bring a more clearer zoomed out perspective to the entire issue that I think is missing from our public debate forum as of now. And I think that if you pay attention to what I'm about to say, you will get to see the real problem and real solutions to that real problem. So let's get into it. The first thing that I would like to say is that if the government, the ruling government, really is trying to change the name of the country to crush a branding strategy being used by opposition parties, that sounds so utterly ridiculous. I mean, like I said before, it's not as if those parties cannot start to call themselves Bharat and make some full form out of it. Everyone can. And it's anyway, this sounds like such a corporate like thing to do, isn't it? This is how a big corporate would crush um, the marketing or the branding of some other big corporate or a smaller competitor, etc. Now, I personally feel already very disheartened that we do know for a fact that our politics, at least in India, I think across the globe also nowadays, is being run like a business. There are political parties. Um, and governments, for that matter, sending out targeted ads to people talking about their agendas and their motives and what all they've done, etc. And trying to seek profits out of running, running for elections and um, running the country, etc. And then um, I remember a couple of years ago, I came to know about something called horse trading, which is that after an election has completed, a party can end up buying candidates, literally buying candidates who have won election from some other party to come join their own party. This is literally bribing. On the face of it, this is literally bribing. And I remember discussing this with a few of my friends and almost all of them were okay with the fact that yes, this is how politics run. 
this is how everything is done these days and this is how even the opposition parties can be doing it and probably are doing it now i am personally i am convinced that we human beings as of now as of 2023 are running our companies our corporates in a very messed up manner there is only profit and shareholder value which is kept at top at the top of the um, priorities and to think that our elections and our governments are also going to be run like that it's not something we should be comfortable with i do not have a solution for it but at least i'm not going to stoop down so low as to say that this is okay this is how things are supposed to be done anyway do not stoop so low as to start to defend it at least voice that this you're not comfortable with it and let's see if there is a solution to it too now the second thing that i want to talk about is the more important one and that is if the agenda of changing the name from india to bharat for the ruling party right now is one of trying to preserve our cultural heritage or going back to our traditional roots etc that is something that i want to have a much more deeper discussion about than a superficial one and the way i want to do that is i want to bring to your notice that this is something uh, every time this kind of a conversation happens in the indian political atmosphere it's very similar to how politics is being run in the us right now there's almost two groups of um, two almost very well defined groups of people who are very steadfast in their stances on certain topics and they are almost acting like torch bearers of truth in their own limited perspective of how they view things and they just don't want to relent and therefore the division is so obvious that no compromise seems to be even possible as of now and this is something that i think is emerging even in india these days you would see that people have such strong stances about topics such as this and there is no middle ground there is no compromise that seems to be possible and i want to talk about that i want to talk about the root cause for that and i have a few messages for both those sides of the spectrum firstly to the people on the right side of the spectrum which are the people who tend to believe that yes there is value in going back to our roots we had a lot of value in what we accumulated in our eastern traditional heritage and therefore even a move such as calling ourselves bharat again is validated along those lines to this group of people i would say that see there is definitely value in what our eastern spiritual traditions had to offer but what i see happening in our country is that almost none of these people who want to act as torch bearers of eastern spirituality actually understand eastern spirituality i mean almost all of them are always only only focusing on bhakti on devotion and worship of a god and they do not even understand that this is one aspect of religion and spirituality and not the end all be all the of course this right side is in itself a spectrum of course so the extremists on this side would be people who are i don't know religious fanatics or in fact there is this one video a very disturbing video which a friend of mine shared with me recently there is this lady she's standing on her terrace there's a flag next to her i don't know what flag it was and she was saying that it was supposed to be a windy day but it's not you can see that the flag is not moving and then she starts to say that i'm going to chant hey ram and you'll see that a wind will start to blow and that actually happens she starts to chant hey ram hey ram hey ram and wind starts to blow and her flag is moving and the only reaction i had to that video was hey ram literally this is what we have stooped down to this is what we are considering to be spirituality now bhakti worship of a god worship of a goddess is a part of religion it's a part of yoga bhakti yoga used to be a part of yoga but it is a means to an end and not the end in itself i think if you lie on this side of the spectrum and you want to preserve the value that our traditions had if you want to build on the value that our traditions had you first have to it's a no brainer you first have to reach the realizations that your ancestors reached and then build on top of that you cannot be starting from a middle ground what i mean to say is almost all people on this side of the spectrum have received their religious and their spiritual lessons and teachings and realizations from their parents from their priests from people who are running businesses in the name of religions and therefore their own their own notions about spirituality are misguided 
and therefore they cannot really offer anything of value to anyone on the other side of the spectrum who are realizing that all of this is bullshit now if you have been following my content for some time you would know that i talk about spirituality and religion and philosophy on my channel and my podcast and i talk about it inspired from advaita vedanta non duality zen buddhism hinduism yoga and all of that is eastern philosophy and it's a no brainer that if you are someone who wants to make an argument that preserving our her- our heritage is of any value to anyone humanity india you anyone you have to first go through it yourself you have to first understand it yourself so that you are able to deliver that value out to others it's disheartening to see that the torch bearers of our eastern traditions are people who consider that renaming our country bharat is an important factor in turning more spiritual in turning more people more spiritual i mean do you really think that swami vivekananda would have been up to this task would have been convinced by your argument that yes this is what we need to do to turn the country more spiritual i think it's a no brainer that people on this side of the spectrum have themselves not discovered what they are defending they keep on defending this fake sense of identity not fake this very real sense of identity that has been built on top of all of this hogwash of stories and myths and dramas and lies and rituals and practices that it cemented into their own ego and therefore they feel that it's it's the backbone of their own identity and they need to defend it and the foundations are quite weak honestly and therefore we find that people on this end of the spectrum the arguments that you would you would give are are always about topics like we should be burning crackers on diwali we should be renaming our country bharat we should be celebrating our festivals the way we want to that is not the essence of anything to do with eastern spirituality and if these superficial things are what you think to be spirituality or the important parts of spirituality even i think you need to dig deeper and i think you need to understand what you're defending yourself firstly and here are a few books i would recommend for the same read up the works of osho jiddu krishnamurti read up gyan yoga by swami vivekananda read up transliterations of shrimad bhagavad gita not translations but transliterations and read up um, the book of mirdad the power of now there are so many beautiful books that you can go through on the topic of spirituality which are actually inspired from the peak of advaita vedanta the peak of hinduism and then build from there meditate on what you read from those books meditate on what you can consume from my podcast or my youtube channel and do not just accept my word or words of the authors for that build on top of it try and meditate and see what fits into the current modern world and then try and improve from there on onwards that is the bharat that is the india that we should be running towards secondly to the people who lie on the left side of the spectrum these people are most people who are disenfranchised with everything to do with tradition and uh, culture and religion and they've started to consider that of course again on a spectrum that these things have little to no value again i think i relate a lot to this side of the section this side of the spectrum as well because it, it's i think that when you touch science it's very likely that you turn atheist because you very suddenly get to realize that almost everything that was presented to you in the name of religion and spirituality from your parents from those tv shows we used to watch as kids from um the books and the rituals that were practiced in front of us when we were growing up all of them were almost cartoonish like stories being told to children about the world and once you realize that those were stories you there's there's a mistrust that forms from all of that ill ill not really ill intention but um almost misguided practices that you see happening in the name of religion and spirituality and it's not uncommon for you to start to believe that everything to do with religion and spirituality and tradition is regressive and untrue and incorrect and oppressive at times etc 
even to people on this side of the spectrum i will say that if you fall on any of these categories if you are considering that everything to do with spirituality etc is um, of no value at all i think that is also a point of ignorance and i've said this before on my podcast too i used to be an atheist myself in my formative years and it was not until a good few years ago when i started to understand my own mind better that i realized that we tend to generalize things way more than it's actually true our mind tends to form a very coherent story for us and we very likely believe it to be true so make sure that the stories in your mind are being questioned and you are raising your level of awareness about them see um, if you think that there is nothing of value that eastern spiritual traditions have to offer here is something that i like to tell these people i know people on this side of the spectrum like to attribute again i'm generalizing but we do like to attribute that the west is responsible for promoting the idea of mental health all across the globe and i don't know if that is actually true country really attributed like that but anyway let's just engage ourselves for a moment and say that the west is actually responsible for letting humans understand that your mental health is as important as your physical health and therefore you need to take care of it to add to that eastern spiritual traditions have been for centuries telling that spiritual health is equally if not more important and and when i say spiritual health i mean what you consider to be your place in life how you relate to life as a whole how you relate to humanity or the universe or life with a capital l as a whole that is important and th- there is something to be said about the attraction of this angle of spirituality to the western mind as well that is of course why in one sense what attracted steve jobs to those ashrams in northern india and in fact one book that i highly recommend everyone to read is be here now by richard alpert or ramdas this guy richard alpert was a psychology professor and a psychologist a, um, a professional psychologist in harvard in us and he was realizing that whatever he had learned from all the different theories that he had uh, educated himself on with regards to mental health in the us he was realizing that they are not enough it, it simply does not work it's not working on me so it's not going to work on my patients too and the book describes in some detail his adventures which brought him to india which brought him to again neem karoli baba was the name of that guy who he met he was a spiritual guru eventually and he wrote a book about his realizations in india inspired again from eastern spiritual traditions i'd say so be here now is one book that i definitely recommend to everyone to read and try and understand more because you see if if we start to have extreme positions such as if the extreme position on the right is that everything to do with religion and spirituality is um, amazingly literally gold the extreme position on the left is that everything to do with religion religion is absolute hogwash now while i do realize that a lot of what is to what is practiced in the name of religion is hogwash it's not all hogwash and therefore people on this end of the spectrum if you are someone who voices your concern about about actions that are taken on this side you also need to understand what these people stand for because eventually if you think how this plays out people on the left do try to um, i think oppress is not really the right word but that is eventually what it starts to appear to people on the right because if you start to always say things like everything about hinduism is bad everything about religion is um, regressive and oppressive etc and we should not be practicing it sanatan dharma is um, i don't know bad i don't know what all the adjectives you may end up using for it all of that is a direct attack on the identity of people on the right and therefore they start to feel oppressed and while oppression has been considered to be the ter- territory of the left we can see it happen on both sides of the equation right now in india people on the left feel threatened by what is being done by the right wing government and people on the right also feel threatened by the ideas and the the opinions of people on the left 
because you do start to appear as if you want to crush this identity completely and therefore this is the middle ground that we need to find we need to find a middle ground of understanding because there is definitely value in what our tradition and our heritage has to offer but that has to be arrived at from both sections of the society and while i do understand that not everyone is going to be able to dig deep into what i'm talking about here we still need to try to do that at least people who are voicing their concerns at least people who are interested and are resonating with what i'm saying here if you want to solve a problem if you want to solve the problem that we're talking about here today you need to find this middle ground you need to come prepared talking about topics such as this from a point of view of awareness and not ignorance and that is something that i think is genuinely missing in in the in discussion such as this right now so if you find yourself very easily belonging to either the left or the right or any of these two dichotomies very easily on any such topic understand that you are a part of the problem and not a part of the solution and if you want to become a part of the solution you have to make yourself more aware more aware of what people on the other side are talking about and more aware of how you and other people on your side are being biased now that is a role that you should be playing and a good starting point at least with regards to the topic that we have discussed today are all the different books that are listed out there is a complete section of recommendations of books that i've listed on my website you can filter them out by category and there's a separate category for spirituality and philosophy go check them out and like i said before do not take the words of the authors do not take my words for to, to literally mean what is being said meditate on them have your own thoughts build out of them and then act out of the highest understanding that you can conjure that is what you should be doing and if you think that you cannot play such a high role in resolving these issues i can tell you one more role that you can be playing just share this content share this content in your community share it in your whatsapp stories instagram linkedin wherever you feel it's appropriate just share it out and let other people with whom this message will resonate come over and discuss more from a point of view of awareness that is also a very important role to be playing because on the internet right now with all the random meaningless content that we are generating anyway it's important that a genuine message a genuine message of uh, trying to solve a genuine problem reaches out to people via a genuine word of mouth process so that's it that's all i would want to say in today's video make sure that if this resonates with you you share it in your community you can reach out to me via all the different links available in the description box below and i hope to see you in the playground the next time until next time peace out